I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, Velocities of Music, the best kept secret in music reviews. Today, we are here, gonna do, you know, we did Siamese Dream as our last album review. Mm -hmm. Today, we're gonna do Back to Back. We have had tons of requests for a, any Nirvana album. There's been a lot of requests for Bleach. There's been a lot of requests for Smells Like Teen Spirit. But never overall, uh, 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 sorry, yep, never mind. <laughs> There's it, been track, the yeah. most requests, though, for In Utero. Mm -hmm. um, so without further ado, we're gonna we're gonna take this thing down. Uh, Tom, what is, kind of give us some history on Nirvana. Nirvana, yeah. uh, the band, and then you know the time period. It's 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 a very complicated. You can't issue. you can't escape it. Yeah, right. I mean you can't just jump into Nirvana and go straight to the sound and the music because of any band in history. I think Nirvana with Nirvana, the context is more important right. than like almost any other band. I mean, it's all about timing for them. Uh, you know, they really ushered in a new era coming into the '90s with what was popular in rock. Um, and they didn't really even mean to, right. which is what's really key with them. And In Utero is the classic example of that. Now, when you look at their early work in the late 80s, you know, when they were just kind of this underground band, they came out with Bleach that mm -hmm. didn't really get a lot of attention, but it got enough attention to garner them uh, a better record deal, right. um, which is when they went and made Nevermind in 1991. And, I mean, once again, you know, these were just guys making the music that they wanted to make. They didn't really think anything too largely of it. It. And then somehow, never mind, became this sensation, as as everyone now, you know, over 20 years later knows. As as they say, the rest is history. Um, but that's what we're here to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, so that album just just launched them into fame, and it, it kind of threw them off for a loop. And so everyone's thinking, well, what are they going to do next? And obviously, the band was thinking the same thing. And the chief singer songwriter Kurt Cobain. Um, I mean, you know, he's an icon by now. Not much that can be said about him that hasn't already been said, but he he really wanted to kick against that. I mean, the success of Nevermind was so monumental that he's like, well, I really want to make something noisy, something that gets back to my roots, something that people really have trouble appreciating, you know, really stretch people. And it's actually incredible when you think about it that way, how much people still liked this album even initially right um it, you know and it wasn't just entirely that kind of bandwagon like blind loyalty to the band you know i mean maybe there was a little bit of that it's hard to say but still people love this album i love this album there's a lot of people a lot of you that have requested this have said i like this better than Nevermind." right um which you know to compare the sounds there they went from from never mind you know being a very uh, very polished, smooth album. It's still rock. There's still lots of intensity, some screaming, you know, very distorted guitars. But it just has this this nice kind of shine on it. I think that's what made it uh, palatable for for consumerist America right. in, in the early '90s. Um, so coming off of that, you know, th this album is so much just it's thicker. It's just unforgivingly noisy. Um, I don't know how else to well, say and, it. And not only that, but there's also some softer moments, too, where Nirvana uh -huh. shows their, their songwriting abilities and the fact that they're able to kind of work in some atmosphere. You know, mm -hmm. tracks like Heart Shaped Box, um, Dumb, and All Apologies, The Closer. I mean, these are these are songs that, you know, two of those there are just some of the most famous songs ever written, yeah. um, it, it, especially when you consider, you know, monumental and, and, and um, influential songs. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just think it, it really shows Nirvana's ability to grasp different forms of sound um, in, in rock music and, and present it in a way that no, that other bands have never even thought of doing before. Um, my favorite part about this album, Tom, is that you know there's extreme highs and extreme mellow points, mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that that contrast is what really makes this album uh, so addictive. It makes yeah. it it makes it memorable. Um, and, and, and to tell you the truth, the middle moments where, you know, Nirvana's rocking out, but it's not quite as, you know, uh, Kurt Cobain's not, you know, shrieking into the microphone and Dave Grohl is just crazy on the drums. Um, when it's just more of a, a kind of in-between, um, that that's where I kind of, uh, I don't lose interest, but I just don't find it to be quite as engaging. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as just an overall listen, I felt like there are some really, really seriously good tracks here. And then I honestly think, and I'm, I'm going to take some slack from you guys from that, that's all right. Um, I, I feel like a couple of these tracks aren't quite up to um, the up to par from from you mm -hmm. know a, a instrumentation from a songwriting perspective. I feel like they're they're really famous songs they're, that have gotten Nirvana a lot of cred, a lot of press. Um, but you know tracks like "Rate Me," uh, that song kind of bothers me. Mm -hmm. I, I think that 
you know, the message is very clear. You know, Kurt Cobain's making a statement, trying to be as out there as possible, but there are so many people who are like, yeah, Rape Me's the best song ever. It's so awesome. He, like, wants me to rape him. <laughs> it's so dumb. It's so dumb. This song is actually a very simple song, and it, it, it rocks out very nicely, but um, it's it, at, even at that time had been done. Songs like that had been made before, um, and, and that was kind of the beginning of, of um, you know, that was kind of serves as the model for a lot of uh, of uh, bands that picked up where Nirvana, where Nirvana left off and, and you know carried on Nirva Nirvana's influence, they had these very simple song structures and you know light rock outs and the chorus and stuff, and it just never had that intensity that Nirvana was able to put into it. Mm -hmm. um, and and I think that that's kind of part and parcel with a lot of the of the tracks we have here. And I, I agree with what you say about Rate Me. I still really like that song, but I totally understand where you're coming from because that's a moment where it's like the music itself take second place to the message that they're trying right. to get across. And I, I think that, you know, r regardless of who you are or, or how famous you are, or how much influence you have, those moments when the music takes back seat, it never ends up as good as it could be. Right. I mean, you compare like that track to Scentless Apprentice, which Scentless Apprentice is just this powerhouse, just completely unapologetic. Mm -hmm. and And... It's so much more impactful, right. I feel like, because they're focusing on getting the intense, the message across through the intensity right. and their performance rather than kind of like like controversial gimmicky lyrics. Right. Or you look at the last track, All Apologies, mm -hmm. where you have, you know, it starts off, you have actually kind of an upbeat, optimistic melody to it. Yeah. And and then, you know, that song still is able to have kind of a, a soft undertone and a good mood to it. Mm -hmm. And Excuse me. Memory uh, tapes interruption. Memory tapes interruption. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it's still able to to achieve, you know, that that rock out at the mm -hmm. end that that is is so is so good to have as a closer because it reflects oh, the entire album from a from a play standpoint. For so, me, it's one of the best closing tracks. I, like, I think so too. I think it's just one of the, so well. the best written tracks ever. Mm -hmm. Um, overall, I think that this album, as Tom said, just is more important contextually than yeah. it is um, from a music standpoint. I think that there are tracks here that are just fantastic, um, but as an album, there are moments that there's weakness. And and but overall, the sound is just so good. I'm sitting at an 87. You know, contextually mm -hmm. speaking, of course, this is a 100, but we're just looking at it, yeah. just grading the music and what we've observed in this. I'd say 87 is where it's at for me. I'm going. I'm going 93. Mm -hmm. And one other thing I want to say real quick is is you know this album, it's been appreciated by you know so many people I can't even put a number on it I mean it's it's huge so is Nevermind and I love how different the two albums are and how it shows the progression of a band that unfortunately just got cut off too early yeah. I mean and it's a classic example of like looking at, at music production the way music's presented a lot of people complain about the production on Nevermind being too too good the production on this being maybe sometimes too raw, but it really fits the songwriting. Right. And I think it's a classic example of how production should enhance songwriting and fit with it. And for me, the production styles on both albums are perfect. That's a really this, good point. This album's not perfect, but the sound and how it's presented yeah. works really to its advantage. Yep. Where are you sitting at this one? Uh, I'm going 93. So averages out 90, 9 out of 10 from us. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's a really good score. Could be higher. That just kind of symbolizes that this album does not is not the perfect album. Um, but it's okay if you guys like it. And don't ever, ever take our scores or the scores we give as a sign of whether or not you should like an album. We're just two guys who film us talking about music. Literally, that's it. Don't worry about what people say about the music you like. You are mm -hmm. entitled to like whatever you want, and we're just here to talk about it. That's mm -hmm. all we do. So, leave us a comment. www.velocitiesinmusic.com or youtube.com slash velocitiesinmusic. Also, as always, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. Tell us what your favorite Nirvana album is, what your favorite Nirvana song is. If you guys have any advice for us, please, please let us know, because we're sitting here building Velocities in Music for you guys to facilitate the conversation of music we're trying to have. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're forever in debt to your priceless advice. <laughs> I'm Jake, I'm Tom. and we are VIMTV, moving music critique forward.